What's going on? This is Ryan with Automatic Comics, and up next, I've got these four boxes here, about $4,000 in books, and some awesome books in here. Really excited to open these. And then after that, I'm going to pick one of the books, and we're going to go over some keys related to that book, especially because we've got a movie coming out next year uh, that is very focused on that character. So stay tuned. <music> Right, so before we get started, please remember to hit that like button and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this. So like I said, I've got four boxes here. There's six books, and I think about $4,000 in books, maybe a little bit more. Like I said, there's been some recent news that may have impacted the price of at least one of these. Then I'm going to uh, go over some keys related to one of these books. We'll look and see which ones are, are maybe undervalued, which ones look like they might be good to pick up right now, do a comparison of all of those. So excited for this video, I think it should be fun. And so this right here is probably the biggest book, well not probably, is the biggest book. So we'll save that one uh, to be the last box. But we'll start with, uh, with this one here. Now, there should be two books in here. I've uh, fallen a little behind on, on my uh, my unboxing videos, and so I had a couple packages stack up, and I, I want to try to play catch up a little bit, so I got a, a few that I want to get into here, and let's see, let's make sure we've got, yeah, there's two books in here. Uh, one of them is a Silver Age book, one of them is a Golden Age book. Uh, one I am, I'd say I'm much more excited about than the other, uh, so first book here, so just the, the one I'll say I'm, I'm less excited about, uh, but still a pretty cool book. It looks like it's in nice condition. Uh, this one I think was estimated about a 7.0, and this is X-Men number 40. And if you're not familiar with this book, this is the first appearance of Frankenstein in like Marvel Comics. And so it's kind of a weird, <laughs> weird crossover with, with the X-Men and, and Frankenstein. Um, you can see it's a, it's a nice presenting copy. Uh, it's not like a super valuable book or anything like that, but it's still, it's a Silver Age X-Men book, kind of a fun first appearance, so I thought that would be one that was was fun to pick up. Now this next one though, this is one that I am uh, much more excited about getting. So when I saw it pop up in a claim sale, I was pretty sure I was going to end up with this book. Uh, I was happy that the seller took my offer, and so uh, this one isn't a a real high grade or anything, probably somewhere around a, maybe a three, uh, we'll see. Uh, but it's Detective Comics number 164. And this is this just classic Bat Signal cover. This is not the first Bat Signal cover or anything like that, but it is definitely the most Bat Signals <laughs> you know, that you got on a cover. Um, but it's just this cool black cover with the Bat Signals right on it. You've got Batman and Robin running on the front, you know, kind of that serious look. It's, just, it's a it's a cool cover. I really like this cover. I think this is a, a really fun uh, golden age cover. It's not campy or anything like that. It's got just great content. And so very happy with this one. Now you can see it's got this uh, this chip up here. And it's kind of, let's see if you can see it. But there's some, yeah, there you go. There's like some bends and, and that kind of thing on the cover. But in general, you know, and, and then let's say like this edge is a little rough. In general, it's, it's a nice presenting copy, Golden Age, complete picture, so so very happy to, to add this book because if you're not aware, if you watch my channel before, I am a big Batman fan. I like the Golden Age Batman books, and that's one I've been trying to pick up for a while and just haven't had the opportunity to. All right, so the next book here, uh, so this is actually the one that has the books in it that are, I think there's only one book in this one, the book in it that I'm going to expand on later in the video. So we're gonna talk about keys related to, to this character. And let's see here. Uh, let me make sure, yep, that's what this is. All right, now this is actually a, a second appearance. It's not actually one of the books I'm gonna talk about. Uh, I'll talk about uh, some other books related to it, but this is the second appearance of a of a pretty big character, especially in the last 
I'd say six months or so. And I just want to get this tape off the front. All right, so this one is not a high grade. Uh, this one was estimated around a two to a two five. Uh, but this is Journey into Mystery number 88. And so you can see there's, there's some creasing and all that kind of stuff on the front. Um, but it looks attached, everything looks attached. It's complete, it's a complete looking book. I would say two to two five seems very reasonable. I'll, I'll definitely, just like with the other books, I'll take them out and I'll, I'll flip through, make sure everything is there. But if you're not aware, and this is a piece of tape that's not on the book. Uh, if you're not aware, this is the second appearance of Loki. And so his first appearance is in Journey into Mystery 85, which is a book that has just exploded over the last six months or so. It's definitely come back down since the show, but still way up from where it was last year. Uh, but this is his second appearance. And I've mentioned that in some other videos that when you've got books that get prohibitively expensive for their first appearance, that's when I think it is very worthwhile to move on to second appearances uh, because then it becomes something that is you'll drive more people towards. And he's also on the cover, which I think is great. And so just a, a cool early Thor book, because I mean, Thor's first appearance is Journey into Mystery 83. So this should be like his sixth appearance, because I don't think he had any crossovers by this point. So very early Thor, second appearance of Loki, and uh, just a cool book, nice presenting book. So I'm going to expand upon the Journey into Mystery keys. So I think it'll be fun because there are some, there are a few big keys in that run. Now, the next one here, uh, this one has what are some, some pretty rare books in it. So this, this unboxing has a, like a good mix of, of gold and silver age books. And this one has a couple golden age books in it, or it hopefully has a couple <laughs> golden age books in it. And there we go. Yes, all right, so I'm gonna get the tape off again off of these, just so that you can see the book clearly. Yeah, that is a, that is a cool looking book. All right, that one is cool. And this other one, I just thought, the other one is one I'm gonna talk about that I think they're, they're pretty undervalued pre-code horror books right now. So uh, some that I would say, like if you can find them, maybe try picking them up. But the first one, this is a classic pre-code horror cover. This is a, it's a pretty big cover in the uh, grand scheme of pre-code horror covers. And this is horrific number four. You can see it's this like shrunken head on a spike with the flames and, and all of that, you know, and it's, it's not a, again, not a high grade book. So this one was estimated at a three to a three, five. I, th I think it, it, it might get there. It, it's, it'll be close. I think largely because of the spine, the spine has a lot of wear to it and a lot of kind of like breaks along it. So that's going to be the big detractor for this book, but it looks like at least the top staple is attached. Not sure about the bottom staple, but I mean, the main thing with this book is just that it exists. It's having a copy of this book because this is not a common book. I don't even think there's any on eBay at the moment. And that's a pretty good way to gauge rarity on a book because eBay has a lot of books on it. It often has a lot of very rare books on it as well. And so, and, and big keys. And I'm, the last time I checked, I couldn't find a copy of this one. So horrific number four, it's got, it's a pretty cool title. It's got a lot of pretty brutal covers on it. This is one of the, one of the big, big ones. And uh, so yeah, very, very happy to be able to pick up a copy of this. Now, the other one was this magazine is haunted number five. And I think this is a pretty undervalued run of books. These are surprisingly affordable. And uh, if you can find them, they're, they're relatively rare, but they just, they don't seem to cost that much yet. Uh, but I think it's the type of book where the cover content, like you can see the cover content, you've got this woman on the front, this super creepy zombie skeleton thing. And they've got some, some pretty crazy covers. And some of them I think are starting to get some attention. And so, uh, definitely something to pay attention to with uh, with these because they're still, in general, very affordable. And I think these are some that in, in the pre-code arena could end up going up in value as people find them and just kind of like see how cool that, that content is. So a couple of really cool pre-code horror books. All right, and now the last one here. And this this is definitely the, the big one of the of the bunch. 
Uh, this is an amazing Spider-Man key, and I was very happy that with the uh, with the price, I, I gave an offer, and and uh, the, the seller accepted my offer. He's a he's a great seller. He 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 works with me a lot. I buy a lot of books from him, and I haven't had a copy of this book for a while, and I am I'm very happy to, to get one back and yeah and it yeah it looks nice all right so let's just get the uh the tape off here and let's show this book and you'll see why i said that uh the value of these books may be up a little more uh, from what i had originally estimated based on some recent news um, because this is amazing spider-man number 50. And so this is the first appearance of Kingpin, and there's been some recent news with Kingpin uh, that uh, that has maybe had a little bit of impact on the price of these books. Now, they'd already been going up because people had been speculating on it, um, but now that things have been confirmed, uh, yeah, and you can tell this is a, I mean, it's a beautiful book. The, the main flaw on this one is there's a reader crease along the spine here. Doesn't go the full length of the spine, um, but it does go about half, about halfway up the spine here. Um, but but this is a beautiful book. I mean, like the the edges look really nice. You see, there's that little crease in the corner there, and like everything just looks super nice with this book. I am I am really happy with this book. This is a nice looking book. Uh, I yeah I. I will probably not be getting rid of this one um, because I I had had a copy of this book before and it was it was one of the worst buying experiences I have had with a book and I just I had to sell it because it was so frustrating um, because what had happened I've, maybe I've I know I've talked about it in some video in the past but I had bought it on eBay somebody that was doing an estate sale for someone else so they were selling a bunch of stuff for another person which happened to include some comics. One of them was an Amazing Spider-Man number 50, and it was a beautiful looking copy. Now it had a lot of tanning, so that was really what was gonna hurt the grade on it, but the cover was just super clean, you know, and, and so it was, it was probably gonna come back like a six, five, seven, uh, just because the tanning was gonna kill it, but it looked like a nine. I mean, just a, a beautiful book. And uh, so I, I got the book and I, I opened the package and it, it was missed, like, out in the, the corner down here. It was missing a, a big piece in the corner. It had a big tear along the edge. It had uh, some other, like another piece that was missing on the back. And, was, and But you could tell it was the same book. It was definitely the same book. And now the seller was, was good about it. They gave me a pretty substantial refund and let me keep the book. Um, but I mean, with a book like that, it's like you, you don't get that book back. You know, that's gone forever. And so it was just, it was very frustrating to have that book get damaged like that. But yeah, super happy with this one. I mean, yeah, <laughs> just like the, it's just such an awesome cover. The, the colors are just incredible. So I am, I'm definitely happy with that book. Now, so I've got, I got all these books here. The one that I'm gonna expand on is this one here. So Journey into Mystery number 88. Uh, not about Loki, but about Thor, because we have the Thor Love and Thunder movie coming out next year, currently estimated with a release date of July, and there was recently a kind of like a poster leak that, that showed uh, Jane Foster in her, one of her outfits uh, for the movie, and so people started getting excited about that, and so I thought it would be a good time to go over keys related to the Journey Into Mystery run, and specifically because I feel like this run of books just doesn't get enough attention. It's similar to Tales to Astonish and Tales of Suspense, uh, these runs where that main character's name isn't the title, like Amazing Spider-Man, Fantastic Four, X-Men, you know, that kind of thing. They just, they seem to get a little more ignored and don't get quite the recognition that the other titles get. And there are some big keys in this run. So I think it's worthwhile to talk about those keys, see how they've performed and look and see if there are any that look undervalued right now uh, that might be worthwhile to pick up. Whether it's for the Thor Love and Thunder movie, for uh, the continuation of the Loki show, or just, just 
to grab books related to this run to see if any of them look undervalued right now. Now, there are some other minor keys that are in this run too. I'm not gonna go over everything. I'm just gonna go over six books. And at the end, I'm going to have a kind of like a chart like I normally do, and we'll see which ones look like they are the most undervalued, uh, the ones that you should maybe consider looking to pick up right now. All right, so the first one, and we can't talk about Journey into Mystery without talking about the first appearance of Thor. And so this is Journey into Mystery number 83. And while I don't personally have a copy of Journey into Mystery number 83, I've never had a copy, I do have uh, two copies of the Golden Records reprint, which is a, I think is a pretty cool reprint because it's just uh, like three years later after Journey into Mystery 83, uh, came out and it's the same cover basically minus the the price and so I have actually I have two nine eights <laughs> of, of this book I, I just I ended up picking them up a couple of years ago and the, I thought the prices were really great on them and they uh, uh, yeah it's I think it's pretty incredible having Silver Age books in a nine eight so I happen to have two copies of Journey into Mystery number 83 in the reprint uh, from 1966 in a, a nine eight but why is this book important? Obviously, it is the first appearance of Thor, it's the first appearance of Mjolnir, and it's one of the top tier Silver Age keys. You know, you've got Fantastic Four number one, X-Men one, Tales of Suspense 39, Amazing Fantasy 15, uh, Amazing Spider-Man one, and Hulk one, and then you've got Journey into Mystery 83. I think this one fits into that category of top tier Silver Age Marvel keys. Now, the grade that I looked at was a CGC 4.0. This is the most common grade, and it has also had a pretty recent sale. Now, the price a year ago was $7,500 for a 4.0. The record from just a couple months ago on October 14th was $16,570. The current price is about $15,000. There was a $14,999 sale just on December 10th, so very recently. So with that, it is up approximately 100% from this time last year, down just about nine or 10% from that high. So a very strong performing book, especially when you consider the, the value of these books. And so that's one of the things I like to talk about when, when I talk about things like speculating on books, that's why you can speculate on big books. I mean, this is a book that went up 100% in a year. That is a huge return on something, on, on a book that is that expensive. Now, for the second book, number two, we're just gonna go one issue later. This is Journey into Mystery, number 84. Now, the reason this one is so important is, well, one, it is the second appearance of Thor, which is a big deal in itself, but it is also the first appearance of Jane Foster, and she has become a, a very popular character being played by Natalie Portman. Uh, she's sounds like she's gonna be playing a major role in the next Thor movie, and I'm really excited for this one because Thor Ragnarok was, it's probably like my second favorite, maybe third favorite, somewhere in there, because Guardians of the Galaxy is my favorite. Thor Ragnarok is close. Uh, probably my second favorite MCU movie. I just, I really enjoyed that one. Thought it was really well done. They're bringing the same director back, so I, I'm really excited for uh, for Thor Love and Thunder to see how they, how they do that. Now, the grade I looked at for this book was also a CGC 4.0. The most common grade is actually a 4.5. That one hasn't had a sale nearly as recently. Now, a pri the price a year ago for a 4.0 was just $715, which just seems like such a steal. Uh, the record on May 23rd, so back when we were having these really high prices in comics, uh, was $1,900, and its current price is sitting at around $1,600. Now, it's selling for about $400 per grade point, looking at other grades around it. Um, so that's that's how I, I came up with that estimate. But it also seems to have a very significant jump once you get above that 4.0 grade. You have some really high sales as you get into the four fives and the fives. So based on that price from a year ago, it is up 124%, down 16% from its high. And I'm not surprised to see this one move up. It just, it feels like it's undervalued, partially because it's also got that first appearance of Jane Foster in it. Now. 
like I've said before, second appearances tend to go for about 10 times less than the first appearance. And that is definitely also true here, because uh, I just talked about Journey of Mystery Agent 3, and in a 4.0, that book is going for about 15,000 now. In a 4.0 for this book, it's going for around 1,600. And so that's right about 10 times less. So you can see that that really does tend to be true in most cases, but with this one having that other first appearance as well, I, th I still think it seems a little undervalued, uh, but it has gone up significantly since last year. I was actually bidding on a 1-0 on Heritage tonight, but I didn't end up getting it. So uh, that was a little unfortunate, but but it just it kept going up and I decided to, I decided to pass on it. Now, next book is again, just one more issue later, and this is Journey into Mystery number 85. Now, this is that first appearance of Loki, but it's not just that. This is a multi-key. It's the first appearance of Heimdall. It's the first cameo appearance of Odin. It's the first appearance of Asgard. And so it's just, it's a big multi-key book. You've got Loki right on the front of the cover. It's a great cover. And for this one, I also looked at a 4.0. Now the most common grade for this book happens to be a 3.5, but again, that 4.0 had a more recent sale. Price a year ago for a 4.0 was just $1,400 the record on June 13th, so right when we were in that Loki show, was $6,200. Just astounding, like 300, 350% gain in that book in, in like six months, basically, when, when that show came out. Now the current price, it's come down significantly since then, but it is still up from its price a year ago. It's at about $3,600. So it's still up 157% since last year, but down 42% from its high. So this is one that is very interesting to me because it is a multi-key, so you don't just have Loki going for it. You've got Heimdall, who is just a, a favorite character in the Thor movies, unfortunately not around anymore. Uh, same with Odin, also unfortunately not around anymore. And Asgard <laughs> isn't around anymore. Uh, so a lot of the things that that uh, this book is known for, at least within the MCU, have been killed or destroyed. Uh, but we do still have Loki. Loki has another season. He is just one of the favorite characters created in the MCU. And so even though this one is up 157%, the fact that it is down so much from where it was, it's an intriguing book. It's one that I think is interesting to look at because I could see prices in this one potentially maybe not getting up to where they were at the, the absolute peak of the prior Loki show, but maybe approaching that. All right, so for number four, we're making a pretty big jump here because it's just there's not a lot of keys in, in this run after that, at least until you get to issue number 102. And so this is actually also a multi-key. This is the first appearance of Sif and the first appearance of Hela. And the grade I looked at for this one was a CGC 6.0, which is the most common grade. Surprisingly affordable book for being a multi-key with some characters that were pretty popular. Granted, neither of them are really around anymore, so that is something that maybe hurts this one a bit. The price a year ago for a 6.0, just $275. The record from August 21st of this year was 550, so it had jumped 100% but it's retreated quite a bit since then. Its current price is about $375, so it's up just 36% from this time last year, down 32% from its high. But the big issue with this one is that I don't see something that's necessarily driving the prices for this book. It's definitely a key, a great book to own, but not something that really has that catalyst that's gonna potentially push the price of the book up because Hella was in theory killed. <laughs> she may come back, you never know, they can always bring anybody back. And while Sif wasn't part of the Warriors 3 group that got killed by Hella, she hasn't made a reappearance anywhere. And so I don't know if they're ever planning on actually bringing her back again. The other thing that this book uh, kind of doesn't have going for it is that it's not a great cover. Neither of those characters are on that cover. It's unfortunate if, if they had one of them on there, I think it would help the book a lot. But that is another downside with Journey to Mystery 102. All right, now again, we're just going one issue later for number five, and this is Journey into Mystery number 103. And again, we've got another multi-key. It seems like Journey into Mystery, it had a number of books where you didn't really have the, the key issues going on and then they crammed a bunch of bunch of uh, important first appearances all into to single books. So this is the first appearance of the Enchantress, also the first appearance of Scourge. 
Now, Scourge was a, he was a great character in the last Thor movie. Unfortunately, he is also dead, uh, but Enchantress is not. And so the tricky thing with Enchantress is she is kind of the female Loki from the Loki show. Uh, so that's, that's basically the character that has been called Enchantress, even though it's not technically exactly the same character. That's kind of who we've been calling Enchantress. And so this did drive up prices on this book a little bit earlier this year. Now, the grade I looked at was a CGC 5.0, which is the most common grade for this book. This book just doesn't seem to exist as much in the higher grades. The price a year ago was just $325. It hit a record of $528 very recently, and so I've got the price still at $528. So it is up 62% from this time last year, which is not much compared to a lot of the other books that I've talked about, but it's at its peak. Is that a bad thing? I personally don't think so because this is one where because we're, we're technically kind of calling uh, the female Loki Enchantress, I fully expect that we'll see her again in the next season, uh, that this is something that actually has a, a, a catalyst for it that could drive those prices higher. So even though it's at its peak, it's only up 62%, which is a much lower level of performance compared to a lot of the other Journey into Mystery keys. All right, now the last book I'm gonna talk about, number six, not technically in the Journey into the Mystery run, but it's Journey into Mystery Annual number one. And this is a book I've talked about in the past. I have a couple copies of this book. It's the first appearance of Hercules and the first appearance of Zeus. And this one is probably the biggest or one of the biggest speculation type books for the Thor Love and Thunder movie. And the reason is because of that first appearance of Hercules and Zeus, because Thor Love and Thunder is going to have Gore the God Butcher. And like everybody kind of says, if you've got somebody that's name is God Butcher, he's got to butcher some gods. And so one of those might be Zeus. And then there's definite speculation that we're going to see Hercules in this movie. If he doesn't show up, it'll be unfortunate, but there is speculation that we're going to see Hercules in this upcoming movie. Now, the grade that I looked at was the most common grade, was a CGC 6.5, price a year ago, just $450. The record, just on December 13th, but this was a White Pages copy, so I think that may have had a, something to do with the price being a little higher than I would have expected, was $1,450. Now, the reason I say higher than I would have expected is because of prices for other books that have sold in, in grades around it. So, the prices on this book have really been all over the place lately, and I think it's because people just aren't quite sure on the spec on it if that character's gonna show up. And so a 5.5 had sold for 690 on December 18th, but had been as high as 840 in the summer. A 7.0 sold for 1,153 on December 2nd, but that was as high as 2,400 in June. A 7.5 was at 1,602 in November 21st, but it was as high as 2,225 on May 19th. And then an 8.0 very recently on December 17th sold for 2,326.75 on the same day. So we've really had prices kind of all over the place. That's why I have the current price of this book at $1,150. I may be lowballing it just a little bit. It may be a little higher, but the one sale that I think kind of like really hurt it was the 7.0 that went for 1,153. But that was, I mean, that was a big drop. That was a drop of about 50% from its high. So again, this one could be a little higher, maybe 1,200, maybe 1,250, but I've got it at 1,150. Now, even at that, this book is up 156% from where it was a year ago. So there is definitely the speculation pushing the prices on this book, but it's also down 26% from its high. And depending on the grade, some of them are down way more than that. Like I said, with that 7.0, we had it at $2,400 and it had its most recent sale at 11.53, over a 50% drop. And so this is one that leading into that movie, it's, it's definitely kind of like a speculation buy. It's a key. It's going to maintain value regardless. But if we don't get Hercules, if we don't get Zeus, I could definitely see the prices in this book drop. So take that with whatever risk you want. But if we do have those characters show up, we could see those prices that those high prices that we saw before come right back. So that's what makes this book especially interesting to me. 
All right, so now let's take all six of these books, we'll put them up on a, a chart next to each other, do a little comparison of them, and see which ones seem like they are maybe the undervalued books right now, the ones to go after. And there's one especially that jumps out to me, and that's Journey into Mystery number 103. And the reason being that it's only up 62% compared to the 100, 124, 157, 156 for a lot of the other books. And it also has a character in it that has a catalyst for the future. You know, that, that next season of Loki. I think that's something that could potentially continue to drive up prices for that book. And so even though it's at its peak right now, it still feels very cheap to me. $528 for a 5.0, when it's actually a pretty good cover, you've got her on the cover. So that's one that I think is the most undervalued on this list. Obviously you can see here that issue 102 is just 36% up, but the issue I have with that book, the reason I don't have it highlighted, is that I just I don't see a catalyst for it. I still think it's a great book to buy. It seems like it's pretty affordable for, for the characters that are in that book, the first appearances that are in that book, but I just don't see something that's gonna drive up those prices. Now, there are two other books on here that you can see I've got a slightly different shade of yellow, not quite as highlighted, because I think they're a little riskier books to buy, but I do think they have potential. There's things that I like about them. And so that's Journey into Mystery 85 and Journey into Mystery Annual Number 1. Now, 85 is a huge key. You know, like I said, it's got like four or five first appearances in it, including just big, big characters. It's a very expensive book. It's thousands of dollars. You're not going to find that book below a grand, even for probably a 0.5. And so it's an expensive book. I completely get that. But it's one that I think still has some possibilities that could drive it up higher again in the future, specifically a continuation of that Loki show and the fact that Loki is just such a favorite character. Tom Hiddleston does such a good job of that character, such a fun actor to see play this role. And so hopefully we'll still continue to get him after season two, but I have, I have no idea what Marvel's plans are for that. Now, the second one, this is probably the most speculative type book on here, and that's Journey into Mystery Annual Number 1. Still a big key. You, you've got two big first appearances in Zeus and Hercules in that book. But you can see, prior to when people started thinking we might see these characters, it was a pretty affordable book. I mean, a 6.5 at $450, and now it's up 156%. This is the second biggest performer on this list, only behind Journey into Mystery 85. So that's why these ones are definitely a, a little riskier buy, just because they are up so much. But I like these two because they have the potential to have characters that are, are very popular with the fans and have catalysts that could potentially drive those books up higher. And so that's why, to a slightly lesser extent, I think Journey into Mystery 85 and Annual Number 1 are good options to at least watch right now and see if maybe you have the opportunity to pick them up for a decent price. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Saw some cool books in the unboxing, maybe some books you've never seen before, like some of those pre-code horror books, and maybe got some ideas on some books that you might want to pick up leading into the Thor Love and Thunder movie and the next Loki series. If you did, please hit that like button, hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this. I've got more videos over here if you'd like to watch some of my other videos and the subscription button right here. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, I'd really appreciate it and I will see you in the next video.